You know, once in a while, it's nice to dip back into the past to find something useful for the present. Like, for example, this mood ring. Remember these from the 60s? No? Remember anything from the 60s? See, there's some kind of weird chemical on here that makes it change color with the mood of the person who's wearing it. Came in real handy when you're on a date, kind of gave you a signal of when to make your move. But after you get married, you need more of a distant early warning system. So I taped a bunch of these mood rings to the doorknob on the front of my house. See, the doorknob is brass, so it actually conducts the mood from inside the house. That way, when I get home, I can get a sense of what kind of mood my wife's in without even having to step through the door. They, the color tells me whether I need to get maybe flowers, chocolates, or a place to stay. from the government uh, for the town of Possum Lake. They're going to have a spelling contest with a $1,000 first prize. It's part of a big plan to smarten us all up. Apparently, they had some survey, and the average Canadian is stupider than ever. <laughs> I tell you, though, these politicians better be careful. If we get too smart, none of them will get elected. <laughs> good morning. Yeah, good morning. G-O-O-D-M-O-R-N-I. Thank you. I'm sorry, Harold. That's incorrect. It's quarter after three. I'm just, it's a spelling exercise. Oh. I want to be the spelling rep for the town, you know, for the big spelling bee. Yeah, so I'm using a dictionary to practice. <laughs> well, you, you have to earn that job, Harold. See the rules here? You've got to have an open competition with at least three people in it, and then the winner of that represents the town. Yeah, that's okay. I'm fine with that, because I am a very good speller. Yeah, all right, fine. Are you a good speller? I don't really know. You know, my handwriting is so bad, I've never been able to tell. <laughs> Well, I'm a very good speller. Yeah, all right. You can pick any word out of this dictionary no, and I can no, spell no. it. Go ahead. No, pick any word. No. Pick a word. 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 All right, I'll pick a word. Okay. Obnoxious. O B N O. No. H A R O L D. <laughs> and look, look, look. Hey, there's a picture of you. <laughs> it's time for the Possum Lodge Word Game. Today's prize is a coupon for a free session at the House of Hammers and Phrenology, <laughs> where we give you a bump on the head, then read it. <laughs> okay, Harold, cover your ears. Okay, Red, you got 30 seconds to get Harold to say this word. Car. Car. Yeah, all right, my son. And go. Uh, all right, Harold, this is something that you've got to have if you want to go parking on Lover's Lane. A girl. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, no, no. But this is something that you need to attract girls. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Fluency in Klingon. No, no, no. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, no. Okay, this is something you don't ever want to have an accident in. A rented tax. <laughs> oh, okay. Most of us at the lodge have these, okay? Uh, Winston's is a Hemi, Dalton's is a hatchback, mine's about 15 years old. Bad haircuts. <laughs> Almost out of yeah. time, Red. Okay, no, I know, I know, I know. Okay, uh, Harold, this is something that will take you anywhere you want to go at any speed, day or night. A T1 high-speed wireless connection. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's great for shopping on the internet. That's where I bought my cargo pants. There we go. This is the repair shop part of the show we call If It Ain't Broke, You're Not Trying. <laughs> Joining me today is local water taxi operator, Hap Shaughnessy. You got a pair of boxing gloves there, Hap? Yeah, I'm in training. <laughs> Thinking about going back in the ring again. Yeah. But my old gloves are coming apart at the seams. Well, they're in good company. <laughs> I didn't know you were a boxer, Hap. Huh? Oh, I didn't fight under the name Hap. Oh. Back then, I was kid unbelievable. 1964, I was making ends meet by working as a limo driver in New York City. 
It was my job to drive a young Sonny Liston to his fateful bout with Cassius Clay. At Madison Square Garden, my grandfather built that place with his bare hands. You know. One at a time now, Hap. Come on. <laughs> Anyway, Liston and I got into a squabble about the validity of my quantum physics theorem. <laughs> and the next thing you know, the cars pulled over and Liston and I are throwing punches at each other in an alley off 47th Street. <laughs> I led with the right, he crossed with the left, and suddenly, bam, tremendous blow to the head. Well, you know, that explains so much. <laughs> oh, not me. Liston went down like a sack of hammers. <laughs> Right there at that moment, I was the champ, and I got nothing for it. Anyway, I folded Sonny up, threw him in the limo, took him to the fight, and the rest is history. Yeah, well, your boxing gloves are all done there, huh? Oh, I think you'll great. find they're as good as new. Yeah, great, yeah. great, great. Thanks, Rick. All right, no problem. Well, I sure hope the Boxing Commission grants me my license. Yeah. You know, it's a part of my life I want to get back. I feel the same way about this conversation. <laughs> A lot of people have these ceiling fans in their houses. They're supposed to help with the air movement so that instead of your house having a couple of cold spots, it's cold all over. <laughs> I don't really like the ceiling fans all that much. At the low speed, they cool off your soup, and at the high speed, they blow your toupee right into it. <laughs> Mind you, they are handy for slicing fruit. <laughs> But I believe I have a better use for ceiling fans. See, instead of using energy, my idea has these ceiling fans saving energy. Now, some of you may already be ahead of me on this. That just means you probably shouldn't be watching my show. I believe Lawrence Welk is on. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is mount these ceiling fans onto this car, one on each corner, see? And then as they spin around, that's gonna give me lift. Lift is very important, as any woman will tell you. <laughs> but in this case, see, the lift is actually gonna reduce the weight of this pig by about a thousand pounds, gonna give it the same gas mileage as those little puddle jumpers they sell to old ladies and college professors. <laughs> now we just need some way to spin the ceiling fans. Can't just plug them in and drive away. I mean, even if you did have a long enough extension cord, you'd have to worry about pedestrians and lift bridges, and you'd always have to come back the same way you went. So instead, we're just gonna take the wheels off this baby carriage. Shouldn't be too tough. If you have my kind of medical history, the wheels fell off your baby carriage years ago. <laughs> Oh, 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 it's a doll. Now, here's where the real genius comes in. No, I'm wrong. Okay, I'm gonna use the car itself to power these fans. See, I'm gonna mount a ceiling fan over each of the wheel wells, and then when the carriage wheel rubs up against the tire, that'll make the fan spin, even on the front wheel. And even though it turns like that, it's still the center of the top stays in the same place. Hey, how brilliant is that? You know, no wonder my parents questioned why I found grade seven so hard every year. The only other tricky part is you gotta take a look at the angle of the fan blades, make sure you mount them on the right side of the car because one side's gonna go one way and the other side's gonna go the other way. And if you do it wrong, the fans will push down instead of lift and that's gonna kill your gas mileage. It'll be like driving around with Moose Thompson on your roof rack. I think we're good to go here. And this is way better than the EPA solutions to gas mileage. They just want you to go slow. Heck, that's what walking's for, huh? <laughs> With my system, the faster you go, the faster the fans go, the lighter the car gets, the better gas mileage you get. I don't see a downside. Do you? <laughs> let's take her for a spin. Heck, let's take her for four spins. <laughs> so remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Oh, here's another bonus. Hitchhikers won't come near you. a sensible explanation as to why men do so many crazy things. Now, I don't care what species you look at, the male is forced to attract the female's attention. Peacocks spread their tails, rams butt heads, 
men drive monster trucks. <laughs> now, I know when you see a guy peel away from the stoplight or crush beer cans with his forehead, <laughs> most women just roll their eyes. But the truth is, men are programmed to choose behavior that doesn't interfere with mating. You know what that means? That means that somewhere there are other women who are actually impressed with male stupidity. <laughs> we call these women girlfriends. <laughs> then later, when they come to their senses and see the idiotic behavior for what it really is, we call them wives. <laughs> So whenever you see a guy belching the national anthem while he accompanies himself with an armpit, wish him luck. He's either not married or about to be that way. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. On my way. Rothschild sewage. When you can't take it anymore, we'll come over and take it for you. <laughs> Now, we're not quite ready to fill out the entry form yet, but we thought we'd have a little trial run between Dalton and Harold there, so... Might want to check the spelling on the... Oh. All right, um... Harold, you ready for your first word there? Okay. Uh, let's see. Indices. Indices. I N D I N D I C E. I wasn't really asking you, Mike. <laughs> what? W what's your guess, Harold? What he said. <laughs> okay, Dalton. Quadrennial. Quadrennial. W what does that mean? Something that only happens every four years. Oh, like Anne Marie getting romantic. <laughs> no, no, it's more like the Olympics. <laughs> You don't know Anne Marie. <laughs> All right, just take your guess, will you, Dalton? Okay, okay. Um, Q U A D. Q U A D R E N N I A L. Mike, do you mind? Oh, oh, oh! Sorry, Dalton. I, I don't know what came over me. Well, it's the chainsaw, the sound of the chainsaw. Every time he hears it, he goes into that trance and starts spelling. Well, why would that be, Harold? Oh, I know. It was a cellmate I had in jail who used to punch me every time I spelled my graffiti wrong. <laughs> chainsaw Morgan. So you learned to show a little R-E-S-P-E-C-T, huh? <laughs> I found out what it means to me. All right. <laughs> suck it to me, suck it to me, suck it to me, suck it to me, suck it to me. <laughs> Putting a little campfire tent thing together out behind the lodge. Walter was bringing the cooler, and Bill and I were putting up a watch or something. Uh, I guess there wasn't much in there. Okay, okay. You know, well, you got to be responsible for yourself, Walter. You got to watch. No, don't, no, 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 no. There's no need, no need for temper now. You're not hurt. You're fine. So Bill and I are trying to get the tent together, and Walter's trying to clean things up. And, okay. Okay, now that probably hurt. Okay, that's probably hurt. But again, you gotta want, you always, when you're camping, there's a few youngsters out there, you gotta watch what the other guy is doing. You know, like, don't do this. For that. And uh, we didn't know what was pulling on. We again. See, that, that, that way lies madness. Um, so we got the tent up, and Bill's gonna get the campfire going, and, and we're gonna just split a log, so he's got, and just, just gonna, just hit it. Walter, hit it. Walter, 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 Walter. While we're young, hit the log. And you know this happens sometimes, you get a green log or what have you, or maybe the axe isn't wide enough at the one end, but uh, Bill's gonna get the can, not too many. Oh, I take, no, not, don't use, no, don't use all the matches, Bill, not. Yeah. All right, so, uh, meanwhile, no, see, a, a second axe into the, roughly into the same split, we'll just open that baby right up. Just hit it, Walter, hit it, hit it, Walter, hit it now. Walter, hit it now. Okay, I was wrong. Okay, okay. No, um, hmm. Uh, yeah, well, let's try. By this point, we tried a few axes. <laughs> and, uh, unbelievable that a log would take that. My, must have been lots of knots uh, in that. Well, I got an idea, though. Just let, let's flip her over. Just flip her over. Meanwhile, Bill is, uh, going back to the old style of lighting uh, a fire with the, the string and the. 
I don't even know what they call this, but it's nothing good. And then, <laughs> all right, that should, that should, no. Oh. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Boy, oh boy. We're gonna run out of axes here. This is, we got the double ender. I used to call it when we were younger and, oh. Hmm, okay, 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 okay. So now Bill's starting to get some smoke. He's getting some heat going there. Yeah, take her up a notch there, Bill. And actually running out of spaces to put a, a, an ax into the log. So, yeah, I got another idea. I think that, uh, we, oh, and then, it's on fire, Bill. It's on fire. Get it down. Okay, now just move the camp. Yeah, move the campfire over to where the fire is. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just on, not, don't blow too hard. Easy, easy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So I figure if we use just a hatchet, just in the right spot, we still got room for that. Now, Walter's not good at, at taking direction, and he just misinterpreted my instructions. No. Like, how is that helping? I don't, I don't understand that. Meanwhile, Bill's, uh, he's got enough of it stamped out. He's all set. He's ready to, to bring the, to bring the log over, but... Okay, well, you know what? I got an idea. Okay, and we're all... Ch don't watch Bill eat. Don't watch, but not, not if you're eating it all yourself. You can't use the log to burn. You use it as a holder. always had hobbies, like fishing or building things or just winging acorns at squirrels. <laughs> Unfortunately, men have also had chores, like cleaning out the eaves troughs. The difference is, hobbies are fun, chores are work. Now, on the surface, it may be kind of hard to tell them apart. What's the difference, you might say, between collecting screws in a jar and picking up your laundry and put it in a hamper? <laughs> or what's the difference between polishing your car and polishing your silverware? Simple. One is a job, the other one is a hobby. The trick is to be able to combine the two. And I'm a tricky guy. Here we have a hobby, this model train, and a job to do, clean out those eaves troughs. See, so you've attached a snow plow onto the front of the train. It gets to do all the work. I get to have all the fun. You get to watch. form uh, we got Mike and Dalton from the lodge and then the town is sending up some lame entrance Sam something or other so that we'll have three and that'll make it legal and uh, we're gonna help Mike out a little bit we got Harold outside with a chainsaw he's gonna rev it up you know just at the right moment <laughs> y'all good to go there Harold <laughs> okay let's get started I'm ready to SBEL <laughs> had my alphabets for breakfast yeah, we just, just got to wait for the, the, the token uh, entrant from the town there. You know, it's Sam something. Or, that, that, you know what? That's probably him right now. Sam. <laughs> Hello there. Um, we'd like four boxes of cookies if you'll take a check. I'm Sam. What? I'm here for the spelling contest. This is Sam. Well, you know, uh, we have some pretty big words in this thing. That's okay. I'll help you pronounce them. <laughs> all right, well, uh, all right, I guess we're ready to go. Are we all, are we ready to go? Yeah, all right, great, okay. All right, well, uh, ladies first, Damn. Rhythm. R-H-Y-T-H-M. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, Dalton, your word is... Chachka. I give up. Well, that's a little embarrassing, isn't it? Not nearly as embarrassing as it would have been. All right, Mike. Chachka. Chachka. T C H O T C H K E. Yes, sir. Tied up. <laughs> All right. 
Mike, you go first this time. Okay. Your word is pick a lily. Uh, well, we, we didn't uh, use uh, the word pick a lily in prison. Oh, man. Time's up. Pick a lily. P I C C A L I L L I. I win. Gotta go. Oh, it's meeting time. M E A. Oh, no, 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 no. Where you go? I'll be down in a minute. My wife is watching. I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. Real tense day, and I'm hoping for a little relief when I don't spell it R O L A I D. And okay, <laughs> the rest of it. Thanks for watching. I'll be out myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge. Keep your stick on the ice. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. All right. Why no army, Eric, and bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm a man, but I can change if I have to. Ah, yes. Okay, man, we're out of the run for the spelling bee and the thousand dollar prize. So I was looking in the lodge cash box, and I was just wondering, how many of you know how to spell I O U? Okay, and how many of you know what it means? That's what I thought.